I need to help with an intubation. What do I do? Well, we're gonna help you identify the supplies you need to get for that intubation and we're inter intubation, and we're gonna help you look at your role um, in that intubation. What do I need? What are the supplies I need? Well, most ICUs keep an intubation tray or kit available. Now that may have changed with managing patients with COVID-19, so you'll want to find out if there's a special tray for those patients because they wanna limit the amount of equipment that goes into the room because once it's in the room, it's considered contaminated. There may also be, you'll need a laryngoscope. And if your hospital has a glide scope, a visual scope that you can use, that the provider can use, that would be great because that one helps uh, them visualize the vocal cords uh, easier than a lar general laryngoscope. You'll need the bag valve mask with the filter hooked to oxygen. You'll need endotracheal tubes. They're generally, um, for most patients, a seven French, seven and a half French for women and an eight French or an eight and a half French for men are generally what are used. You'll need an end tidal CO2 detector. You'll need to gather the medications for rapid sequence intubation and those vary by provider. So you'll need to find out what the orders for those are. You'll need your PPE. And if at all possible, and I know this is becoming harder and harder with the increase in numbers of patients we're seeing with COVID-19 who need to be intubated, the best practice, if you can do it, if it's available, is to intubate the patient in a negative pressure room um, if it's available and possible. So what's your role? What do I do? Well, as the nurse, you're going to want to make sure the bag valve mask is um, with is got the filter on it and is hooked to oxygen. You're going to ensure that there's at least a 10 to 15 liter flow and that the reservoir bag is fully inflated. And you're going to want to ensure that the patient gets pre-oxygenated. You'll also want to identify the roles of the patients, the personnel that are assisting with the intubation with the patient. So who's going to be managing the bag valve mask? Who's going to be giving medications? who's gonna be performing assessment and monitoring, and also who is going to ensure that each intubation attempt is less than 30 seconds to prevent severe hypoxia in these patients. So the team roles are typically the provider, there may be one, maybe two, um, is usually the most experienced in intubation, in intubation attempts is it recommended to perform the intubation. There may be one or two respiratory therapists. They usually manage the bag valve mask, assess lung sounds, and perform the end tidal carbon dioxide assessment. And then the nurse will perform the medication administration usually. They'll be monitoring the vital signs, heart rate, the, the EKG rhythm, the BP, the respiratory rate, and the SAT and end tidal CO2. They will also be responsible usually for timing the intubation attempt and ensuring that it's less than 30 seconds and also timing the time for pre-oxygenation and ensuring the patient gets adequately oxygenated before performing the intubation attempt. So what happens after an intubation? Well, the patient's intubated, the securement device is on, and now you're gonna wanna assess for equal bilateral breath sounds. You're gonna to wanna to monitor their vital signs and their heart rhythm. You wanna ensure that a chest X-ray gets ordered and completed. You'll monitor their O2 sat and their end tidal carbon dioxide. You should expect that an arterial blood gas will be drawn within 30 minutes after the intubation. And then you'll expect that the, um, to report that or the respiratory therapist will report that to the provider and the provider will order ventilator um, changes based on those arterial blood gas results. And then you'll wanna confirm how often you're gonna be checking arterial blood gases or if you're going to just monitor the O2 sat and the end tidal CO2 on a routine of that. Most patients who are intubated um, who have COVID-19 and have developed ARDS are on the ventilator for at least two weeks. Some are a little less than that, some are more than that, but we're seeing that it's about an average of two weeks. So once the patient is recovering, they'll need to be weaned from mechanical ventilation. So you'll wanna check your protocols for weaning at your institution. Some things you might hear about is a spontaneous awakening trial and a spontaneous breathing trial. On that free download that I mentioned earlier about ABGs, there's also information on that about spontaneous breathing trials. And then you'll also wanna know about what are the weaning protocols and how, how are those performed for your patients. 
And please realize that once the patient's ready to wean, it may take several days to get them off of that ventilator. They may get too tired and may not be able to be extubated on the day that you start weaning. So it'll, it may take a couple days to get them off. And then what do you do for your patient post-extubation? Well, they still require really close assessment. Um, you wanna check with your hospital policy about keeping your patient NPO after extubation. Some patients have a high risk of having swallowing difficulties after that. So that some facilities have implemented a swallowing screen um, before you can offer them anything by mouth. You'll also wanna let the patient know that a sore throat or a hoarse voice is common after extubation and that that will go away. You're gonna instruct them on how to use the oral su suction as well as how to use the incentive spirometer and at what interval you'd like them to perform and what their goal is. And then you'll wanna implement progressive or continue your progressive mobility with them in order to make sure that they regain their strength and are able to get out of the hospital and get back to their loved ones. So you're thinking, wow, this was a lot of information. What do I do next? I need more help to review the care of these patients. What, what can I do? Well, AACN has provided an e-learning course for you called COVID-19 Pulmonary Arts and Ventilator Resources. It is free. It is an online learning, including the AACN procedures needed to care for patients with COVID-19 that were shared graciously by Elsevier. Um, and it is within that link on the screen that you can download, you can go to that course and enroll. Um, you, if you are not an AACN member, that is okay. It is free to you too. You just need to create an account to enroll. Uh, AACN also has a variety of resources on their coronavirus uh, COVID-19 update page. There are free AACN pocket cards available for download and mobile use. There are free webinars on topics such as pronation therapy that I mentioned, but there's several others about the management of patients um, with COVID-19. There are also free journal articles on topics of relevance for patients with COVID-19. I hope you found this ventilator helpful for you, and I wanna thank you and thank the American Nurses Association for hosting this. I'd also like to thank you, the providers who are providing the care for our patients in this crisis. You are doing a fabulous job. We are here for you. If you need something else from AACN, please let us know. And I want you to know you can do this. Thank you so much.